This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Stay tuned to the end for a very special offer for Arvin Ash viewers. Imagine you're playing an immersive 3D video game. To the characters in the game, their world feels real. They run around mountains, jump under gravity, and experience a rich three-dimensional environment. But behind the scenes, every detail of that 3D world is encoded on a game disc or computer chip. In a sense, the game's reality exists in two forms, the 3D adventures on the screen and the lines of code on a flat storage device. These two forms are one and the same. Now stretch this idea to the entire universe. What if our cosmos, with all its stars, planets, and gravity, has an alternate description, like a cosmic code on a distant surface? This is the essence of a revolutionary concept in physics called the ADS-CFT correspondence. In simple terms, ADS-CFT suggests that two totally different worlds, one with gravity and one without, can actually be two sides describing the same reality. It's as if the universe has both a storage device version and a screen version, and they perfectly match each other. But if one has gravity and the other one doesn't, this raises an intriguing question. If our universe with gravity can be described perfectly by a model with no gravity, is gravity nothing more than an illusion? Does it even exist? And if gravity doesn't exist, does space-time even exist? The answer to those questions might just blow your mind, and I'm going to explain what ADS-CFT is with a simple analogy. Stay tuned because that's coming up right now. The idea that our three-dimensional universe can be perfectly modeled by a two-dimensional surface might sound like science fiction but it's a real scientific hypothesis proposed by physicists to understand how the universe might work at a deep level. Here's how this cosmic duality works. On one side is a place called ADS, or anti-de-sitter space, and on the other is something known as CFT, or conformal field theory. These are technical terms which may be confusing. I'll simplify by explaining what they mean. Anti-de-sitter space is a fancy name for a kind of imaginary universe with some unusual properties. While our real universe can be described as flat and expanding, an ADS universe has negative curvature, like a saddle. Another distinctive feature of ADS is that it has a kind of boundary or edge, though only in a mathematical sense. One way to picture it is to imagine living inside a snow globe. Not because it's round, but because it has an interior where things happen and an enclosing surface, the glass. In this analogy, the interior of the snow globe corresponds to the bulk, where people, planets, everything in the universe is, and the glass represents the boundary of that space. The key difference is that if you travel towards the edge of an ADS universe, you don't hit a hard wall. Instead, the geometry stretches so that the boundary lies an infinite distance away, even though it directly influences the structure of the space. ADS is a theoretical playground where gravity behaves in a well-understood way. Physicists often use ADS space as a testing ground because its mathematical properties are nicely defined. What's important here for our purposes is that ADS is a three-dimensional space with gravity, and it comes with a boundary surrounding it. Think of the bulk as the full 3D world where apples fall from trees, gravity exists, and light and matter move around, just as they would in our normal universe. Now let's look at the other side of the coin, conformal field theory, or CFT. This is just a fancy word for a kind of quantum field theory, one without gravity, defined in a space that has one fewer dimension than the ADS bulk we just described. If we continue our snow globe analogy, the CFT would live on the boundary or the snow globe's glass surface. The word Field theory means it's a framework like those used to describe particles, forces, and fields, like electromagnetism and other quantum forces in physics. Conformal basically means the laws in the theory look the same even if you stretch or rescale things. It's symmetric in scale, something like a repeating fractal pattern. But you don't need to worry about the exact definition. Just remember that CFT is a set of rules for physics living on a lower dimensional surface. But crucial to this 
is that the CFT has no gravity in it. It's more like a flat world's physics. You can imagine the CFT as analogous to the code of a video game or the film of a hologram. It's a description of something written on what looks like fewer dimensions. For example, if our ADS bulk is three-dimensional space, the CFT might sit on a two-dimensional surface outlining that space. Now here's the mind-blowing part. ADS CFT says that the bulk, the ADS space with gravity, and the boundary CFT without gravity are actually the same thing in two different forms. It's as if nature can tell one story in two different languages. One language, ADS, which talks about curved space, gravity, and things like black holes and stars inside the space. The other language, CFT, talks about fields and particles in a lower dimensional world with no gravity on the boundary. But it encodes the behavior of gravity in the ADS. Every event or object in the ADS bulk corresponds to something in the CFT on the boundary and vice versa. The idea is often called holographic principle because it's just like a hologram, a 3D image that's stored on a 2D surface. It's an exact equivalence. If you have a question about the physics in the ADS bulk, you can translate it into a question on the CFT theory on the boundary. If you solve it there and translate back, you'll get the exact same answer as you would directly in the bulk theory. This was first discovered in 1997 by a young physicist named Juan Maldacena, who rocked the physics world with his proposal. Picture a sprawling, open-world video game like Minecraft or The Legend of Zelda. The game's universe has landscapes, gravity, day-night cycles, an entire physics-rich world. But all of that world only exists because of the information on a cartridge or hard drive. The game's code is typically not visual. It's a bunch of numbers, logic gates, or lines of programming effectively existing in a different form. You might say a different dimension. It's important to understand that ADS CFT isn't saying we literally live in a computer simulation, but the metaphor of two equivalent levels, one virtual and one physical, shows us how two frameworks can represent the same phenomena. So this raises an intriguing question about gravity. If it can be described perfectly by a theory with no gravity, is gravity real? Could gravity or space-time itself just be the shadow of a deeper and perhaps even simpler quantum reality? Well, it's real because we can measure it and we have very accurate theories that model it, but it may not be fundamental. Perhaps the most profound implication of ADS-CFT is that it provides a mechanism for gravity to emerge from a system that doesn't contain gravity. On the boundary side, the CFT, we have a quantum system of fields and particles evolving with no gravitational force. It lives in a flat space-time and obeys ordinary quantum mechanics. Yet this system is equivalent to a picture of one higher dimensional world where gravity and curved space-time do exist. In other words, gravity in the ADS bulk is an emergent phenomenon, a holographic image of the quantum field dynamics on the boundary. But how exactly does gravity come out of the CFT? Modern research appears to show that quantum entanglement in the CFT is the key to building the space-time geometry in the ADS. It turns out that these patterns of entanglement can be related to the connectivity and shape of space in the bulk. In a famous thought experiment, physicist Mark Romstonk argued that if you gradually reduce the entanglement between parts of the CFT, the corresponding ADS space begins to split or tear apart, implying that entanglement is like the glue that holds space together. In fact, a compelling demonstration of emergent gravity is how black holes in the ADS correspond to certain states of this CFT. A black hole is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing can escape, including light. That's why it's black. In ADS-CFT, a black hole in the bulk ADS is dual to the CFT being in a thermal state or a kind of hot state with a temperature. This means that features we associate with black holes, its gravity and other properties, are reproduced in the non-gravitational physics of the CFT. So what looks like a mysterious gravitational object in the ADS is nothing more than a bunch of quantum particles in a hot soup on the CFT. No single quantum 
of the CFT corresponds to gravity by itself, but together, their interactions create the effect of a smooth, curved spacetime with a gravitational force. To put it another way, ADS-CFT provides a way for space, time, and gravity to emerge from a lower dimensional quantum world. You can say gravity emerges for free as a byproduct of quantum mechanics in disguise. So if gravity emerges from something more fundamental, as ADS-CFT suggests, it forces us to rethink what is a fundamental force. In physics classes, we always learned that there are four fundamental forces, the strong force, weak force, electromagnetism, and gravity. But the ADS-CFT duality implies that gravity might belong in a different category. It could be a macroscopic phenomenon that isn't fundamental in itself, but arises from deeper laws. To use an analogy, just as waves on the ocean are not fundamental, they result from many water molecules moving under rules of fluid dynamics, gravity could be the wave and space-time the fluid in which the wave forms. What would this mean for the future of physics research? First, it would mean that there are no gravitons at the fundamental level. In the traditional approach to quantum gravity, scientists are attempting to quantize gravity by introducing a particle called a graviton, which confers the gravitational force, just as photons confer the electromagnetic force. ADS-CFT implies that there could be no such thing as gravitons. So quantum gravity is not a separate standalone quantum theory of a force, but arises from ordinary quantum theories. Second, it would show that Einstein's equations can come out of quantum information principles. Third, we might have to redefine what we believe is fundamental in physics, namely space-time. If ADS-CFT is found to apply to our universe, perhaps space-time is no more fundamental than a fluid. It is real to us at macroscopic scales, but at tiny scales, it dissolves into something like quantum bits and entanglement networks. And fourth, we might finally unite all of the known forces. One of the biggest goals in physics is a unified theory that encompasses all forces and particles, the so-called theory of everything. Uniting quantum theory and general relativity has been one of the biggest challenges in physics. ADS-CFT offers a potential bridge. Now, I want to caution that as far as we know, our universe is not ADS. ADS-CFT is best understood in a negatively curved anti de Sitter universe, whereas our universe is closer to a de Sitter space with positive curvature due to cosmic expansion. Physicists are actively searching for a similar holographic principle for the de Sitter space, a DS-CFT, or some kind of celestial holography, where the boundary might be at an infinity in time rather than space. If we manage to find it, it would have profound implications not only for gravity, but also time and causality. If time is emergent, then one can ask, how does causality work at the fundamental level? We might find that our ideas about cause and effect are phenomena that only appear at large scales, but are not built in at the micro level. It could be that time and causality really are not fundamental. But what is fundamental is our collective journey to scientific enlightenment. I create these videos to help towards that effort. But you can greatly accelerate your journey by using Brilliant.org, our sponsor today. I think they're one of the best online learning platforms available. And one course I found very useful and think you will too is called Scientific Thinking. This course will help you learn the art of thinking scientifically. This, in my view, is a fundamental skill that we generally don't even think about. But it will build the foundation upon which you can make better sense of the universe whether it's Newtonian mechanics or the quantum physics of CFT. And you'll do this in bite-sized mini lessons with visual and interactive problem solving that gets you hands-on with key concepts. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant lessons are deeply impactful because they make the learning process fun by making such concepts digestible, using helpful interactive charts and graphics to clarify. You become highly engaged, so you end up remembering what you learned long term. Go to brilliant.org slash Arvinash to get started for absolutely free for the next 30 days. And if you decide to subscribe, Brilliant has a special offer for Arvinash viewers right now. You'll get 20% off the premium package. 
You've got nothing to lose, and I think you're going to like it a lot. Just click the link in the description below. I think you'll be really happy you did. And if you like this video, check out this other video, which I think might answer a lot of the questions that you might have coming out of this one. I'll see you in the next video, my friend.